Sometimes it's up to us. You can't win a race if you don't run, and you can't experience a miracle if you don't believe. Everyone who runs the faith race wins. Jamie Buckingham is in northern Israel, near the place where Jesus said, miracles are available for anyone who believes. I'm standing near the northern border of Israel. Towering behind me is Mount Hermon at 9,100 feet, the highest mountain in the nation. From its snow-capped summit flows the headwaters of, of the Jordan River, the source of both the Galilee and the Dead Sea, uh, far south. Uh, ten miles to the north is Lebanon. Five miles to my left is Syria. It was to this remote place that Jesus brought his disciples in the autumn of 29 AD. Uh, a series of significant events took place. It started when Jesus commissioned his 12 disciples. According to Luke, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. They returned telling marvelous stories of how even the demons obeyed them. Two days later, at nearby Caesarea Philippi, Jesus challenged them again, who do people say I am? And then more personal, who do you say I am? Peter answered, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. His men were beginning to hear God for themselves. Then a week later, Jesus brought them here near the base of Mount Hermon. Jesus took three of the men, Peter, James, and John, and climbed the mountain to a place near the timberline. They were going to spend three days in fasting and prayer, but on the second day, as the men were praying, an incredible thing happened. The appearance of Jesus' face began to change. Then his clothes became bright like lightning, and as his disciples watched, just awestruck, two other men appeared talking to Jesus. Somehow, his disciples recognized them, even though both had been dead more than a thousand years. One was Moses, the other, the ancient prophet Elijah. Scared speechless, the men watched until the apparitions disappeared and Jesus resumed his normal appearance. Only then did Peter stammer out, this is wonderful, let's build a monument. In fact, let's build three monuments and just stay here. Oh, not here, Jesus said, not on this mountain. There's work to do in the valley and the time is short. So, picking up their things, they descended to a place very near where I'm standing this morning. And suddenly, they were caught up in a great human drama, facing what seemed to be an impossible situation. How typical. One moment, we're with God on the mountaintop, the next we're caught up in the swirl of human need, faced with problems that make us just want to rip our hair out. A large crowd had gathered where Jesus had left his other disciples. The disciples were arguing with a group of people about demons. Are there even such things as demons? Can a godly man be possessed of demons? What method should you use to exercise demons? Can children be possessed by demons? Jesus never got involved in these arguments. He just cast them out. This time, it was especially exasperating to Jesus because he had just received word from God that he had less than a year to live. He really needed to be quiet and assimilate all that he had just experienced. Instead, he was thrust into the middle of a silly argument. To boot, he realized that the men he had been training to take over when he left were both stupid and powerless. Had that been me, I would have just said, listen, I've got bigger things to do. I don't have time to settle a stupid religious argument. Uh, God just told me I'm going to hang on a cross for folks like you, so just bug off and leave me alone. But Jesus never turned away from a situation where there was genuine human need. What's the argument about, Jesus asked. Man stepped forward. My little boy has an evil spirit. He cannot hear, he cannot talk. When the spirit seizes him, he falls to the ground. Sometimes he goes into convulsions, foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, becomes rigid. Sometimes the spirit even throws him into the fire. Your disciples have been bragging that they had the power to cast out demons, so I brought them here. But they were powerless. Now, remember, 
Jesus had not only given his disciples power to drive out demons, but they had been successful at doing it. This time, however, they were up against a devil too tough to handle. And it was a sad spectacle. The scribes had been looking for some way to embarrass Jesus, and now they had one. The opponents of God are always looking for some way to prove that God is not worthy to be praised, much less to be obeyed. When they can find a preacher, or a minister, or someone who claims to be a Christian, and that person makes public mistakes, they really capitalize on it. They use us as their yardstick, and when we can't produce or when we fail, they blame God. A lot of you have discovered that most of today's Christians and most of today's churches are not what they make themselves out to be. They hold out great hopes. They talk about power and authority, but when it comes right down to it, most are powerless. They're like these fig trees in Israel, which sometimes have beautiful leaves, but no fruit. Jesus once cursed a tree like that. And yet we know, despite the failures of God's people, that if we could only get beyond the programs of the church, the money-raising schemes we see on television, and the big tell no show of professional religion, if we could just get to Jesus, we could be healed. How long has he been like this, Jesus asked the father. From childhood, the father said. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can. Jesus re repeated the question, and yet he was not repeating the question. He was talking to the boy's father, if, if you, father of the child, if you can. And then he adds, everything is possible for him who believes. Jesus is dealing with a universal truth. Faith resides in the individual. If you, or you, or you, if you can do it, it's an exciting approach to life. Our problem is our lack of faith. The cure of your boy, Jesus says, depends not on me but on you. To approach anything from the spirit of hopelessness makes it hopeless. Anytime you say a thing is impossible, it becomes impossible. To say any disease is incurable makes that disease terminal. Medical authorities, for instance, say the disease of AIDS is incurable. And it is on a physical level. But in the realm of miracle, nothing is impossible, even curing AIDS. Can Jesus heal a man with AIDS? Of course he can. All you need, Jesus says, is faith. Faith in what? Faith in healing? <laughs> no, no, no. That's not it. What you need is faith in God. If you believe in God, then all things are possible. That's what a miracle is all about. What we need is a sense of the possible. Sadly, most of us are cursed with a sense of the impossible. All our lives, we've had people tell us, no, can't be done. If you do that, you'll wish you hadn't. But God is a yes God. He takes the word impossible and changes it to him possible. And so the father begins by exercising what little faith he has. Help me if you can, he says. But when he says that, something blazes inside of him. I believe, he says. It's a kind of a, oh, wow, I really do believe. And then he adds, help me overcome my unbelief. In other words, I don't ever want to go back to where I was. Let's close that thing off. Let's seal it off. I don't ever want to drop back down to the old level of seeing things from the natural. From now on, I want to remain where I am, right on the mountaintop, seeing things from the supernatural. It was then Jesus rebuked the evil spirit. You deaf and dumb spirit, he said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. It was total and complete deliverance. Jesus didn't come just to save us from our sin so that we can get to heaven. He came that we can have abundant life right here on earth at the same time. You can't have abundant life when a demon's throwing you into the fire. That's a tortured life. As we open our Bibles and answer the questions in our workbooks, we need to remember what Jesus said. I have given you power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases.